So here are the learning objectives that I hope to accomplish today. What are the capabilities of the in vivo portion of Adaptivo? Why are these capabilities useful? And what kinds of errors can Adaptivo detect? And before that, I'll give you a little bit of background about Adaptivo. So there are three available modules, a pretreatment module, which is quite useful for cases where you don't want to pull out a phantom for measurements. You can use your integrated EPID panel and do your pretreatment QA. This is an in-air measurement compared to the predicted image from the RT plan. The second module, uh, the in vivo module, as we call it, will be the focus of the rest of the webinar. The in vivo module is very similar to the pretreatment module, with the exception that the patient anatomy and couch are in the beam. I will go into more detail about this module uh, during the rest of the presentation. But before we move on, I wanted to uh, uh, give just a little bit of background about the adaptive module. Um, this module performs a complete 3D comparison beginning with a daily cone beam CT, which is registered to the planning CT, creating a merged CT image. And the, the planning CT fills in areas where the uh, uh, CBCT may not cover. Um, deformable registration is used to generate uh, contours on this daily CT. Uh, dose is calculated on the daily CT and accumulated on the planning CT. Uh, the entire process is automated and requires little intervention by the user. But the focus for today will be uh, the in vivo module. So this module analyzes uh, the, the daily EPID images acquired during plan delivery um, so that uh, the patient and couch position is confirmed during delivery. And you know this is just a graphic representation of that. Um, and so in theory, the beam variability would also be detected, uh, but the sensitivity to delivery differences is minimal. And use of our log file software, LinAcView, is much more sensitive to pinpointing delivery differences. Large delivery difference, of course, within the region of interest will be discernible, such as incorrect plan and, and some other um, uh, delivery uh, discrepancies. Uh, minor MLC differences would not be detectable uh, using the typical 3% 3 millimeter gamma criteria, as this is not the typical pre-treatment patient-specific QA. Uh, a higher criteria is often used, such as 5% uh, 3 millimeter uh, for the in vivo module, just because of you know uh, anatomical differences, and in, in, uh, uh, the user does not want to uh, have uh, too many alerts. Uh, uh, or uh, warnings uh, during um, the fraction by fraction delivery. So um, with the in vivo module, one can um, uh, do the comparison either in predicted mode or in relative mode. So the predicted mode is you know, pretty self-explanatory, but uh, in case you're not familiar, um, with each daily portal image, we compare to a predicted image. And uh, this predicted image is generated based on the RT plan, planning CT, you know, other um, components from the treatment planning system and uh, predicted using a custom beam model. Uh, the measurements for this are, are different than uh, what you would enter into your treatment planning system, but uh, it's an hour to two hours uh, to acquire uh, this data set and model generation is, is very quick. The relative mode, this is pretty self-explanatory as well, but here each daily uh, portal image is compared to a reference portal. Uh, typically, uh, the reference is the first day of treatment, but of course, if there is an alignment issue or, or something that occurred on the first day of treatment, uh, certainly the user can adjust the reference to any other um, um, acquired uh, portal image.
So requirements for Adaptivo's in vivo analysis are the portal images, of course, files from your treatment planning system, uh, such as the RT plan and planning CT, as well as the pre-configured beam model customized to your LINAC. Adaptivo also utilizes the EPID images and machine records associated with the delivery. In the United States, much physics time is focused on pre-treatment QA, but in vivo QA has many benefits, which include uh, measurement during the actual delivery, the ability to QA patient alignment during the treatment, and monitor anatomical changes. All these items help to ensure accurate dose delivery to the patient. And with that, I'm going to give a quick overview of Adaptivo and, and during that demo, illustrate a patient alignment and a case with anatomical changes that are flagged by Adaptivo. And so now you're seeing the uh, Adaptivo dashboard. It is browser-based, so you can uh, bring uh, the software up on any uh, computer that is in your hospital network um, simply by uh, putting in the proper uh, address into your browser. So in the uh, upper left corner, uh, you see the active alerts. And some physicists uh, just uh, open their browser at a specific time or a couple of times a day and check for active alerts. And as you can see, I have um, multiple patients with alerts, and there are multiple alerts because I haven't been keeping up with my active alerts. Typically, you would only have one, perhaps two alerts at a time if you're uh, clearing your dashboard daily. So you could potentially have a, a daily alert as well as a weekly alert. And, and let me go into some more detail about those before I step into those two case studies I mentioned. Um, and so beyond the active alerts, if the uh, physicist would like to uh, just receive emails, uh, one can do so instead, and you can configure Adaptivo to send an email. And so when an email is received, then the physicist goes to the Adaptivo dashboard. So it, it's really a preference for how your clinic would like to operate. Do you want to just uh, uh, bring up the Adaptivo dashboard when you get an email, or do you want to check on a uh, daily basis? And, and typically, um, most of the people using the software do like to um, address those alerts uh, within 24 hours of the time they are received or before the next uh, patient treatment session. And so I'm going into um, um, some more information here on, on the dashboard. Um, so these are all the plans that are, are currently in process at the clinic. Um, and what you can see each row is a, a plan of listing the patient and the plan, the delivered date, and then along here, these, these boxes uh, each represent a delivered fraction or a fraction that is planned to be delivered. So in here we see this was a, a um, boost probably, um, actually no, it's an SBRT, uh, there are five fractions. And then here at the end is the average. So, and you will see the average, you know, throughout all the, the patients here on the subscribe list. And so this is the average of each week at the end of a session, uh, you, you would like to, uh, of course, average all of the um, prior fractions and, and not just have one or two at the very end. So there are different ways you can configure the end of uh, treatment average. And of course, the green is pass, uh, the yellow is a warning, and the red is a failure. And you can see in, in this uh, particular patient that there were some warnings which led up to a failure in which a flag was actually generated, both on the daily and the weekly. Those would have shown up on the same day. And then a couple of more uh, uh, alerts as well. Uh, let's see anything else about this dashboard. Uh, so the, the light um, gray chiclets or boxes are not delivered fractions. Uh, so this particular uh, plan was uh, ended early because I, I know that this uh, patient has already uh, been completed. And then if uh, a, a particular fraction has not calculated yet, the uh, 
fraction will show up as delivered, which is a darker gray, and then the, the calculation may be in progress. Um, and then I, I'm not sure I pointed out the flags yet, and so you would just click on these uh, flags and then you would need to uh, uh, put in some comments, for example, uh, to satisfy and uh, uh, clear your dashboard. Uh, so that, that's uh, typically the plan. So I'll, I'll open up here and you can see in particular for Joe patient three, um, there's a flag for fraction number one. Uh, you can see this as well. If you're looking at the entire subscribe plan list, you can see the fraction um, with the alert in this area. So let me go ahead and open uh, this patient three uh, plan and show you what's um, inside uh, the, the software a bit further. So what we're looking at here are the uh, hot cold gammas over the plan DRR. And uh, you can see in this region that there is a hot uh, gamma failure. And then um, uh, slightly, you, you can, can't see it real well. I'll, I'll zoom up just a, a little bit more for you. Uh, you can see some uh, cold gamma failures here as well. And um, Adaptivo uh, shows uh, both themes at this time. If you want to go ahead and, and view some more details, you just step a little further into the software. And um, there, there are multiple other views you can review uh, besides the hot cold gamma. And just in case you're not familiar with the hot cold gamma, uh, the gamma is calculated uh, in the in the traditional manner, you know, uh, by low, but then you just uh, have a multiplier of uh, minus one or one, uh, depending on if the uh, it's a, a hot or a cold failure. And that makes problem solving uh, quite a bit easier when you're uh, reviewing your results. And so we can look at the hot, cold gamma. Uh, we have um, multiple options uh, with portal registration, portal comparisons. Well, we have the, the more uh, uh, typical gamma with the green area being 0.5 to 1 and uh, uh, gamma failures of 1 being in red and then the plan fluence and portal dose. As well, uh, within the UI, you can um, uh, see the uh, X and Y profiles, which of course you can uh, see in this area. The X profile goes through this area. so. It's running through the, the hotter areas. Uh, the, the red is the reference or the predicted uh, uh, profile, whereas the dashed green is the measured effort image. And in this region, it's hot uh, comparing to uh, uh, this area up above. And then, of course, um, uh, the cold region here, you, you can see. And similar, uh, uh, the white profile running through this region. So we can review the gamma, hot, cold gamma, traditional gamma, uh, portal uh, plan fluence. And then we have this uh, interesting gamma statistics map as well. For this case, uh, the, the warning was at about 80% of the distance to agreement was set at three millimeters and a 5% uh, dose difference. And we also have gamma histograms as well as dose difference. And then, uh, you know, some um, additional information here uh, for review. Uh, we can step back up to the plan and then um, one can review um, uh, reports uh, if you uh, would like. Uh, there are all different kinds of reports that can be automatically generated. Uh, and here I'll just open the end of treatment report. And so that first uh, fraction that was a failure, we see here all the rest passed. On this first day, there was a setup issue. And so, you know, the physicist saw it, uh, went and talked to the therapist that it was corrected and the rest of the uh, fractions were uh, delivered and had a great gamma pass rates. Uh, you can uh, also see the trending of your uh, gamma pass rates as a function of the delivery fraction for each beam. And you can see that uh, they're trending uh, nicely, except for this first fraction where there was the setup issue. And, um, you know, there are uh, different options for the plans. You can, of course, uh, uh, in the report, um, create generate a report with uh, 
the other items that I showed in the UI. So let's go ahead and uh, go back to the dashboard and take a look at a second uh, plan. And I'll go ahead and give you some background on this uh, plan before we step into it. So uh, the next um, plan I'm going to show is a uh, right lung and mediastinum uh, treatment modality VMAP rapid arc. Uh, this uh, patient had recent SBRT to the right lung lesion. Um, and uh, we'll follow it in predicted mode. Uh, other background is we need to minimize dose wherever possible due to previous SVRT within the current treatment region and overlapping volumes. And the patient had significant fluid in the right lung during CT SIM. Um, and this, this was used for the treatment planning. Um, also, there's going to be a relatively large volume being treated to a fairly high dose. Um, and um, changes in the internal anatomy uh, could potentially result in an overlap between the current and previously treated CTVs, uh, resulting in unacceptable hot spots, increasing risk for tissue necrosis. And so, you know, this was a really good case for uh, following in Adaptivo. So let me go ahead and uh, take you back into the software. And so this is the case that I had pointed out the flags uh, previously. So uh, this treatment, uh, you know, started with fraction one, had gamma pass rates uh, through fraction 30. Um, then starting in the next week, there were some alerts and finally a failure, failure that uh, showed up on the dashboard. But clearly, if you, you know, uh, were watching, you could, uh, you know, monitor all of your patients uh, and look in earlier, or you certainly can set alerts um, based on other criteria if you want to get daily alerts rather um, on warnings rather than just failures. So this is all customizable uh, by the clinic. You can set all of your own uh, thresholds. And so what we can see um, on this first flag when we open fraction 35 is that down here on the, uh, uh, the fourth uh, arc, um, you can see the, uh, the hot gamma. And, and you can see that this has been starting to occur uh, with time, you know, back for fraction one, you know, through the first several weeks, and I'll, I'll um, zoom this in just a little bit. Uh, you can see that the gamma cap pass rates were quite high for all four arcs. And then as we get further along to fraction 35 is when we're uh, seeing a, a larger region. And of course, we can go in and look uh, further at this particular case, uh, look at the plan fluence of the traditional gamma. And you can see as well that this is an area where um, the delivery is a lot hotter than uh, predicted. And so what, what is the user thinking at this, uh, the, the physicist thinking that there it could be potentially tumor uh, regression uh, or weight loss uh, from the patient? Um, because you can see the hot regions as shown in your uh, profile. So at, at that point in time, you know, the physicists will need to do some investigation and, uh, uh, you know, use some additional tools outside of Adaptivo. And so here I'm showing some images from the Varian offline review. On the left is the overlay of two images. Um, the upper right is the planning CT. Uh, lower left is the, uh, uh, the fraction 35 uh, treatment uh, uh, cone beam CT. Um, or possibly fraction uh, 36. And so what one can see, you know, in the, the overlay is that uh, in, in this area, you can see a patient weight loss. Also, you know, over in this area, you can see, you know, this fluid in the lungs has resolved um, by uh, this time during the treatment. Uh, you can also see some uh, tumor regression in this area, it's pretty clear. 
And so just to uh, hop back to the software, I should have uh, perhaps uh, shown this earlier. Um, it, you can uh, look at the uh, treatment delivery trends either in the UI um, or in the report as I showed in the uh, um, prior uh, example. And so you, you have a treatment delivery trends where you can review items such as the, uh, uh, the number of frames, um, meter set exposure, and uh, the a daily uh, lateral panel position. Uh, these are pretty expanded uh, uh, graphs. Uh, so you can, they don't show the significant details. But the one I wanted to show you was the uh, uh, gamma pass rate as a function of the fraction. And so uh, this is uh, the, in the predicted mode as planned. And you can see the uh, gamma pass rate as a function of fraction for each beam. And you can see here in uh, the fourth arc uh, where the flag was first generated um, that there was clearly a trend uh, starting, you know, somewhere along a fraction 26 and then uh, really uh, started increasing uh, close to fraction 35. Uh, you know, some variation just because you know, this is the patient, uh, uh, the treatment, there could have been a cough of other things uh, could have occurred. But you can clearly see the trend, and uh, that's what I wanted to show you versus the trend that we saw for the first case uh, where it was very flat. So uh, for this case in particular, Adaptivo alerted the staff that there were significant changes to the patient's anatomy, including weight loss, tumor regression, and a significant decrease in the fluid in the right lung. So based on this information, the physician discontinued the initial plan early, where we saw the not delivered fractions, they re-CT'd and replanned the patient's boost, with an end result that there was significant reduction in the treatment volume, which allowed for increase in tumor dose and a reduction in dose to normal tissue. So um, in summary, um, I wanted to finish with going over these learning objectives. And if we were live, uh, you could provide some of the uh, answers, but I'll, I'll go ahead and, and fill in the blanks. Well, we are live, but I, uh, you can only type in the chat window. So I'll go ahead and uh, uh, provide some answers. So what are the capabilities of the in vivo portion of Adaptivo? One can determine differences in the planned versus delivered dose. Um, one can determine differences throughout delivery from the planned delivery and or initial fraction. Um, why are these capabilities useful? Well, I, I would say that the, the flags prompts discussions between the therapist and the physicist about the patient weight loss or setup. Um, items such as maybe the mask is no longer secure. Um, they also, the capabilities is that it allows for continual improvement and monitoring of patient setup. Also, Adaptivo prompts discussions between the physicist and the physician about potential tumor regression, uh, when to replan. And overall, these interactions promote more accurate delivery of dose to the patient. In the lung case, uh, this allowed sparing of surrounding healthy tissue and a higher boost to the tumor. And so what kinds of errors can Adaptivo detect? Well, uh, clearly all variety of patient alignment issues caused by patients relaxing or shifting, perhaps after the therapist leaves the room, uh, patients that are nervous and then relax um, later during treatment or you know, are, are, are slightly different uh, uh, during CT than during the treatment. Bits of mass, we, we had a, a really fun uh, presentation last month on Adaptivo where a haircut was actually uh, the cause of a mass uh, fit uh, issue. Uh, and then uh, other uh, kinds of errors Adaptivo can detect are anatomical changes such as weight loss and or tumor regression, fluid in the lungs uh, as was shown in the, the prior uh, case. So with that, um, uh, that concludes my presentation, and I'll go ahead and take a look and see if 
there is anyone that has uh, posed any questions. We have um, a, a, a customer that would like to uh, uh, provide a test. Um, uh, we, I, we can reach out later on that. And um, second question is, can you speak to the TG218 compliance using the EPID? And um, so, so that is a great question. Um, I, I know that uh, uh, TG218, um, which, which is, as I understand the task group report, is more focused on uh, pre-treatment QA. Um, in, in my opinion, uh, the, the EPID uh, it is a good mechanism clearly to uh, do in vivo QA because that, that's really important. And the, the pretreatment QA uh, really um, uh, does not capture uh, many of the items that are uh, seen uh, with adaptivo, you know, the, the, the patient anatomical differences. Uh, TG218 uh, does not uh, uh, promote use of ethics, um, but I think that we should give some uh, consideration because it's a, a pretty easy uh, mechanism to do the pretreatment QA uh, as well as first fraction setup checks and, you know, uh, consistency throughout the treatment. Um, how do you manage uh, the uh, composite issue for the VMAT QA? So um, right now, um, it's composite for each beam. Uh, we would like to include uh, some additional uh, granularity in the uh, uh, BMAT comparisons. There are some different schools of thought on uh, how much granularity one should provide. Uh, there are uh, certain uh, customers that I speak to that uh, prefer uh, to uh, uh, use the composite and they think that it, it has more value uh, uh, than the uh, more granular uh, VMAT QA. So there are different schools of thought on that and we would like to, uh, at, at some point in time, expand the options to our customers. But today we're using the composite and as you could see, uh, the, the VMAT plan that I showed, uh, there, you know, definitely you could uh, get some flags and uh, see uh, patient anatomical differences. So it is effective as well, but we would like to provide uh, more options going forward. So um, I don't see any other questions at this time. So thanks very much for your uh, attention and uh, please feel free to uh, reach out to me if you have further questions. My email address is here and uh, have a great day. Thanks for joining.